Hi, Gary Chillingworth here for Air Gunner Magazine, Shooting and Country TV. Welcome to Life at the Range. Okay, once again, so, so sorry uh, for, we haven't got the HW98 video again this week. Um, mainly because I'm rubbish. Um, I got something wrong. My friend pointed it out. We're fixing it. Well, I'm completely redoing it. So two weeks time, I promise, I guarantee you, Otherwise, you feel free to come find me, beat me. Um, but the HW98 will be in two weeks' time, and it will be done, and it will be correct. Um, I don't want to put out incorrect information. Um, so guess what we're doing today? That's right, chronographs. One of the most important things that any air gunner can own. Welcome to Life at the Range. Okay, so chronographs. Um, the fact that I'm rubbish with the HW98 has given me this opportunity to, to look into what I think is one of the most important things that any air gunner can own. I had a great email from Mark. Um, he said to me, Gary, uh, why do I need a chronograph and what advantages will it give me? It's, it's a great question. Um, and it's one that you know I've covered in Air Gunner magazine on, on more than one occasion. These things are incredibly important and not just for the reason you may think. Now, obviously, as responsible air gun shooters, we know that unless we have an FAC license, all of our rifles must be sub 12 foot pound. Now, as a Springer shooter, I spend a lot of time with my rifle in bits. Um, I like to fettle with it, polish it, change springs, do whatever. And then when you mess around with the internals of a rifle, you need to check that your rifle is still legal. Now, if you're using 8.44 grain pellets, the legal limit is 800 feet per second, and that's about 11.95 foot-pounds. I think it's actually about 802, but we'll go with 800 feet per second because it's nice and easy to remember. Um, there are charts available, and uh, I will put up a chart on all of the different pellet weights and the corresponding speeds on lifeattherange.com uh, and on our Facebook page. Oh, and actually, if this is your first time here today, or you know, if, you know, if you've been a couple of times, if you could like, share, and subscribe the video, um, that will be a real help because you know we're trying to get YouTube to promote shooting because we all do it safely, and the more people who watch these things, uh, the better it is for everyone. So, chronographs. Well, we've got three here today. We've got my old scan. I've had this for about 10 years. Um, the reason it's covered in tape and bits like that is because we attached it to the box, and this is one we used to lump around to the UK HFT. A lot of you will recognize this, the Combro. Um, in my opinion, pound for pound, probably the best chronograph you can buy. It's infrared. They cost about 50 quid. You attach it to the end of your rifle via some rubber bands, and this is as accurate as that. But my personal favourite, and there are lots of chronos out there, is this, the LMBR R2A. This one comes from Blackpool Air Rifles. You can also get them through JSR Ram Ramsbottoms. Now, the reason I like this particular chrono is this gap here, 120 millimetres. But this is the one we use at the World Championships and the Nationals because it has got a very, very wide gap. Now, we're now going to do some shooting and I'll show you the advantages of having a very, very large gap on a chronograph. Okay, so our LMBR. What's the main advantage we have um, of having that really large wide aperture? Well, let's go for a wander down the range. Watch out for the little rabbit warren that we've got down there because I don't really want to break my leg. The advantage is you can use it to test your ballistic coefficient. Now, your ballistic coefficient is essentially how much energy your pellet carries down range. I know that at the muzzle, my rifle uh, gives around about 775 feet per second. But when it gets down here with the correct pellets, 
it might carry 620 or 580 with a bad pellet. And with a large chrono, we can set that up downrange so that we can actually measure. So we're now, I don't know, we're about 40 yards away. Um, we've got our target set out. So we'll now set up the, uh, the chrono and we'll show you exactly what I mean. Cheers. Okay, so we've got two brands of pellets. One I know works well in this barrel and one that I know doesn't. Now I'm not gonna say which brands they are because, right, let's for instance say JSP and Air Arms. Both come from the same factory, both great pellets. Um, this is my TX200, I own two. This one loves JSBs, doesn't like AA fields. My other TX, identical gun, prefers AA fields, doesn't like JSBs. That is why pellet testing is so important. But we'll come on to that in a few weeks' time after I've done the HW98 video. Okay. So, let's try not to shoot the chronograph. Okay, I've got the other pellet in my pocket. Let's check. Okay, skirt's okay. So the first one was the pellet, sorry, the first one was the pellet that the barrel likes. This one it doesn't. Both 452 head size. And shoot the chrono. So my guess is the pellet it likes is around about 630 feet per second down range. And I reckon that the pellet it doesn't like is probably around about, I don't know, 560, 570. Um, let's go and see. Well, there you have it, definitive answer. With the pellet that the, uh, the rifle liked, we were carrying 609 feet per second down range at 45 yards. With the pellet that the rifle didn't like, 575 feet per second down range. Both the pellets left the barrel at exactly the same speed, at around about 775 feet per second. Without this chronograph, I wouldn't know that a particular brand of pellet works really well in my barrel downrange. And, uh, well, uh, 34 feet per second difference between the two pellets? I'll happily take that every day of the week, because a faster pellet will take less wind and less drop. So, something that you can shoot through at distance is certainly worth having. That's why I love the LMBR. All the other chronos are great, but this has got a very, very unique feature that quite simply a lot of the other chronographs don't have. So what are the other advantages of having a chronograph? Well, they can essentially help you keep an eye on the health of your rifle. Um, the other day I was on the range and I was all set up and I was shooting and then I noticed that my pellets were starting to drop a little bit low at 45 yards. And also when I was cocking it, it felt a bit squishy. So <coughs> I grabbed my chronograph out of the garage, shot through and all of a sudden I was running at 730 feet per second, whereas I should have been running at nearly 780. So that tells me that there is a problem with the gun. I might have blown a seal. Um, I might have broken a spring, but I knew that there was something wrong. So that's the great thing about the TX. Five minutes later, the gun was in pieces, and unfortunately, so was my spring. Um, but the, the chronograph gave me that initial clue that there was something up. And that is why they are so good. Now, the other thing that chronographs are great at is to help you track your rifle. Now, spring guns are different from PCP. So we'll go with spring and then we'll go with PCP. Um, some of you may know this, some of you may not. With PC, uh, we'll go with PCP first. With PCPs, if they get hot above 75 degrees, if the ambient temperature is warm, PCPs get faster. And if they're slow, and if it's really cold, they get slower. With spring guns, it's different. When they're hot and the seal expands, they slow down. 
and when it's cold and the and the seal contracts they get faster so using a chronograph i've learned over the years at what temperature my spring gun starts to change velocity so i know that if i get to a shoot and it's i know three or four degrees i know my gun's going to be fast if i get there and it's baking hot i know it's going to be slow so i need to give it a little bit more maybe aim a bit more up in the kill so a chronograph will help you really dial in the accuracy of your rifle well worth having One of the other things I like is the fact that you can have it sitting just in front of the peg so that it, when you're practicing and training, as long as it's in direct line between you and the target you want to shoot, you can just look at the target, perfectly happy, shoot it, and then look up and go, oh, 775 feet per second. So that way, if you have a shot hit high or a shot hit low, you can look at the chronograph, which isn't in your way, and you can see whether or not you've dropped power or, you know, it's, it's gone too fast. It's a very, very good training aid. One of the big questions we often get asked are, are chronographs accurate? You know, are they all the same? Well, I can't speak for all chronos, but these are all within a couple of feet per second of each other. Um, as we use them for the nationals and the worlds, I like to keep an eye on them. So what I do is I fit a combro to a rifle, and I fire it through this, through the LMBR, and through the scan, and they should all be within a couple of feet per second of each other. So let's give that a try. Okay, so the Combro's reading is 759, the LMBR 760, and the scan 759. We'll put the rifle down, and without breaking the picture, we'll come in and we'll have a look. So, here is the LMBR, as we can see, 760. Move that to one side. There we have the scan, 759, and here we have the Combro. So, there you have it. They're all within one or two feet per second of each other. So, for, for what we're doing, that is more than good enough. Okay, let's look at the three chronographs that, that we've got here. Now, these are, well, this is the UK's one, but both of these are mine. Um, we'll start with the scan. Now, I've had the scan, uh, it must be 10 years now. Um, this runs off the mains, or if you take it off, you can actually have a bank of batteries. I think it's 12 volt, and that will work. Now, scans are great, super accurate. They're what the police use. But I've found that in bright light today, they, you get a lot of mis, not misreadings, but they just won't register. Um, these are the industry standard. And if you want a, a chronograph to use in your man shed, in your garage, you know, keep in the house, use indoors, you, you, I don't think you can get better. You know, they are truly superb. Um, this one, well, you don't get this version anymore, but they're about 200 pounds. You can get a really funky one that's about 300, which you can connect to a laptop and track everything. But essentially, you put in your weight of your pellet, you fire through, and it tells you what the foot poundage, absolute piece of cake to use. The Combro, well, <laughs> everyone's always owned a Combro. Um, these are superb. They run on watch batteries on the inside. You do also have the option. Uh, you've got cable here which you can run off the old 9 volt battery. Don't lick them. Um, attached to the end of the barrel, run on infrared. Um, you know, basically they're as cheap as chips and you can get an alignment tool. The, the one thing about the Combro 
is when you put them on the barrel, you have to line it up and you essentially have to look down the barrel. So if you're going to have a combro, always check, make sure your rifle's unloaded. Um, put it on the barrel, look down, make sure that, you know, the, the end of the barrel is perfectly center, central to the infrared sensors you can see in there. Fire through and they very rarely won't read. They, they just lives in my car. They are truly excellent. Um, you might guess I like the Combro. Uh, the NMBR R2A uh, runs on two uh, AA batteries, 250 shot string it will store. Um, again, you just fire through, you can put your weights in, and it gives you your foot poundage. It's, it's as simple as that. I mean, it's not rocket science. science. The, these, um, all of these chronographs are, are, are so easy to use. Um, again, you can connect this to a laptop. You can, you can actually get uh, a connector for this to connect this to a laptop as well. <sighs> they are what they are. They're just really, really good chronographs. Um, I, there are other ones out there, the F1, the Cordwell. Um, I don't have any experience of them. Apparently, FX now do a radar chrono, um, a Doppler radar one. God, that sun's got really bright all of a sudden. And you pay your money, you take your choice, give them a try. Um, a friend of mine has got the FX. He absolutely loves it. So that's your chronographs. There is also uh, one other chronograph uh, that I have to uh, tell you about. I mean, we don't actually have one here, um, but I'll put up a picture here or here. Um, uh, a friend of mine, Jason Lockett, owns one, swears by them. They're absolutely great. You buy them from eBay. I think they're under £30. Pounds. Um, they read in metres per second, so you're going to have to convert them to foot pounds, but that's not particularly hard to do. Um, I've never used one, but Jason swears by them, and I trust Jason. So, for thirty quid off of eBay, they are truly super. Well, truly superb. I don't know. I've never used one, but worth checking them out. But personally, Combro. Well, thanks so much for joining us today at the range. I really appreciate you watching these videos. Um, as ever comments in the uh you know put your comments in the comment section below drop me an email at life at a range at gmail.com and please subscribe to the channel um if you have a chronograph uh, that isn't here uh, please let us know in the comments below tell us what you think also please tell me what you would like me to cover um we will be doing the hw 98 next i absolutely promise um after that we're going to do pellets uh do Damaged skirts affect the way they fly, damaged heads. We're going to clean, we're going to wash, we're going to do lots and bits and trials and head sizes and all that kind of stuff. So um, apart from pellets and giving me abuse for not doing the HW98 video, um, please tell me what you want in the comments below and we'll try and get it done. As ever, stay safe, shoot straight, look after each other. Thank you from Life at the Range. Tala.